author of the book Betrayal, Jonathan Carl. After writing the book on January 6th last year, once again, the book is called Betrayal. And, and knowing all you know from your reporting, what about the committee's findings, if any, in, in these public hearings, has surprised you? Well, I'll tell you, the, this may sound silly, but it's that Trump actually wanted to go to the Capitol on January 6th. I mean, he said it in the speech. Right, I'll be up there. I'll but I didn't believe you. it. I mean, I, this may not, you know, you don't believe everything he says in a speech like that. Are you that. saying yeah, that yeah. Donald Trump I'm, I'm, lies? I'm, Is that yeah. what you're saying, sir? So, so he said, and I'm like, there's no way he wants to go to the Capitol. He knows it's like raucous up there. This guy wants to go and hang out at the White House. Yes. While all his people, you know, do what they're doing up there. So when I heard Cassidy Hutchinson say that he really wanted to go, and not only did he want to go, he was pissed off. Can I, he, was, he was upset. You can say pissed, pissed off. Okay, I just want to be sure. Uh, you know, that the Secret Service wouldn't allow him to go up there. That shocked me. I thought he just really wanted to go watch it on TV. But he really wanted to be there. And what does that mean? Yeah, what does that mean? I've always wondered, because it's a big deal that he wanted to go, but I'm yeah, curious, here's what, what happens if he goes? Well, it's almost like he, he wants to go there to preside over the, you know, over, over the disruption of the certification of Joe Biden's win. It's like he thinks that it's going to work. Because why else would you be up there? Why else would you want to go up there with your people? You think that this is your chance to finally stop it and basically exercise what would have been a coup. Are there any leads that didn't pan out for you, like people that you oh. couldn't talk to or leads you couldn't follow that the hearings have been able to Man, get to? I wanted to get Pat Cipollone on the record more than anybody. Lead White House he, counsel. He was the White House counsel. He was there for it all. He's one of the few people that was really with Trump throughout it all on January 6th. And I knew, you know, people close to him, I, I knew a lot about what he was doing. I knew, he, I knew he thought about resigning and thought if he resigned, it could have been worse. I, I knew that he was absolutely opposed to this crazy notion that Mike Pence could overturn the election. I knew all that, but I wanted, you know, and I, and I reached out. I, I, I spent months. Um, I could not get an on-the-record conversation with him. And then... You had off-the-record conversations with I him? I mean, I can't really say that, but, but, uh, but I... Wait, I, uh, wait. <laughs> you can't even say whether you had off-the-record... I'm, I'm not asking you I to mean, tell me. I mean, you just I... told me. You just told me. <laughs> the fact that you can't say, aha, aha. Yeah, I am... I am very persistent, so uh, so you can you can assume. But um, so I, over a year ago, you yeah. had uh, you had a, a sit down with the former president yeah. down in Mar-a-Lago, right? Yeah. Now that you watch these hearings, what of that conversation comes back to you with special force? It, it is the most haunting thing I've ever heard a president, former president, say that I've ever heard Donald Trump say, and that's when I asked him if he was worried about Mike Pence. And he said, no, I knew he was fine. And then I said, but they were, they were chanting, hang Mike Pence. And his answer, this is the part that haunts me, uh, he said, well, they were angry. I said, it's common sense, John. You can't pass on a fraudulent vote. He was defending, explaining first, and then defending the chance of people that wanted to murder his vice president. I mean, just let that sink in. It's like, we, there's a lot of crazy stuff that's said. I mean, that's... I try I not to let that sink no, in. Okay. Actually, <laughs> right. after a year, I've scotch guarded myself, <laughs> yeah, so a lot yeah. of what he says Probably just kind of rolls yeah, off yeah, a duck's yeah. back. Um, you're, you're still reporting on the insurrection. Yeah. And uh, you were in Arizona yesterday talking with election official uh, Rusty Bowers. Yeah. Okay. So who had such a compelling um, testimony yeah. in front of the January 6th hearings. C clearly a deep patron, a man of faith. Um, what did he have to say about where things will stand now in Arizona, for instance? Uh, he's up for re-election. Uh, uh, you know, he's got a race on, on Tuesday. Trump has gone out to Arizona to campaign against him, said that he disgraced himself. He disgraced the state of Arizona with what he said. I found Rusty Bowers to be one of the most serious, uh, good, kind of morally centered people I've ever interviewed. It was a fascinating conversation. He described going back to Arizona after his testimony and some of the blowback he got. And he was, he had, he had somebody come up to him and say, you're a traitor. And the punishment for treason is hanging. I mean, this is the stuff he's still dealing with. Uh, and he's gonna lose, I mean, he, he thinks it would take a miracle for him to win. He wants to win, he's campaigning hard. He, he, 
But you know, and again, this is, somebody who wanted the former president to win. Yes, he was a total Trump supporter, and Trump asked him to use his power as the Speaker of the House, in Republican Speaker of the House in Arizona, to overturn the results in Arizona, and he absolutely refused. Trump talked to him twice. Giuliani turned the screws on him, um, and they they pressured him in every possible way, and he stood firm. And he 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 really faced unbelievable pressure, personal. I mean, his daughter was dying. And they were, they were going outside his house with loudspeakers, you know, uh, screaming at him. I mean... And when asked yeah. if the former president received the nomination again yeah. in 2024, would he vote for him, he said yes. He did say that. He was, he was asked that question. We talked about that. That is not his position. Uh, uh, you, and you can watch him. It's on Sunday on, on Meet... Uh, what on... was yes an ambiguous answer? I don't understand. Well, he, 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 he said he, he, said he was... You know, put, he, I don't really know why... He said it the first time he wasn't expecting the question. It was like, if it's Biden or Trump, and, he's, he, and he kind of leaned back on his Republican. This guy's a lifelong Republican. But he said, he explained to me, there's absolutely no way. So we'll hear more about this. There's no Sunday. way he votes for Donald Trump again. Okay. And, 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 you know, I asked him his advice for people like Kevin McCarthy and others who are, uh, you know, remain supportive. And it's like, tell the truth. Tell the truth. And for Rusty Bowers, the truth is that Donald Trump tried to destroy the Constitution of the United States. And his faith is to the Constitution, his, his, his loyalty is to the Constitution, not to a, a Republican president. Very powerful interview, and one of the most interesting conversations I've had in a long time. Well, Jonathan, thank you so much for being here. Thank you. The book, Betrayal, is available now. It's Jonathan Carl, everybody. We'll be right back with BJ 